Okay, welcome. Welcome, welcome to our fourth uh, edition of Painting Live. I'm just going to get the camera set here. Apologies uh, for that. Yes, uh, welcome to the fourth edition to this Painting Live. And today you can see that we're going to be painting grapes. Uh, this is kind of something that I've been doing a lot lately, recently. Uh, well, by recently, I'll say maybe in the in the last three or four years, something like that. Uh, I tend to put grapes in black and white. Hi, how you, how you doing? Yeah, I tend to put grapes in a lot of my paintings um, just because the uh, the textures and the translucency. Uh, it's really incredible and uh, can be quite uh, convincing. So um, yeah, just by way of example, let me just show you very quickly a painting that I just finished um, that does have a lot of grapes in it. So we see here um, on that level of uh, translucency here. So we're going to be doing this tonight. Not obviously this many grapes, but um, this is the idea. And uh, I'm gonna show you how to do uh, grapes just like this in this color. And uh, more importantly, perhaps, I'll tell you why. Why they, uh, they appear like that. So what colors do we need? Well, hopefully you brought a few different uh, colors if you are painting along. And uh, we're gonna use some reds, um, different kinds of reds and so on. So uh, reference material on this side, we're gonna very loosely use it. This is approximately how many we'll do. I, I don't know if we'll get through that many, but this is the idea. Um, here, this is, this is my canvas here. Now, um, I'm not using a proper canvas. Let me just uh, show you. Let me just show you, for those of you who um, would like to take more and more of these paint classes. By the way, I have the first three uh, paint classes uh, uploaded to YouTube now, so you can go back and try those out. But uh, this is this is the fourth week in a row. Um, so instead of a proper canvas, what we're using is this Canson oil and acrylic uh, paper. Now this is this is a thick paper. You can see it's quite heavy. And it's, uh, it's a good size, nine by 12 inches. And I'll show you the texture. It's specifically designed. So my phone's gonna, yeah, there we go. So it's specifically designed to have the look and feel of canvas. You can see it's kind of simulating a weave here. Uh, why is this good to use? Well, it's, it's a practice, it's a practice pad. So you're probably not going to produce finished paintings uh, on a, on a, uh, on paper like this, I mean, you might. It's it's possible. It, it would look uh, just just uh, pretty good if it were framed. Generally speaking, though, you're going to paint on canvas or or panel or linen. Um, but this is great for practice because uh, you get 24 pages for about ten dollars, whereas a, a canvas of the same size would be you know seven or eight dollars. So. Uh, quite a savings and a great way to practice. It's not so precious when it's just one page that costs you 50 cents. Uh, so reference material here, we have our uh, paper here. This is gonna be for acrylic. And then on this side, this is a, uh, a sheet of wax paper. You can buy those in pads at any art store as well. How you doing, Tanya? Thanks for joining. Uh, yeah, so, um, and this is, you can get in, in a sheet and this is basically a, a palette pad. So you put your colors down here. Okay, let's get started. Uh, today we're going to be doing, we can kind of do some warm grapes or cool grapes. Those are the choices. We'll, I think we'll start with the warm. And um, the first step is we're gonna get rid of all of the white of the canvas. Why do we do that? Well, for those of you who have seen me paint before, you'll know the answer already. But uh, just for the people who don't know, the, uh, the reason in academic painting anyway, why you would want to 
cover the white of your canvas, it's called toning your canvas, uh, is because the white, oh yeah, nine by 12 strap more, that's, that's great. So the white of the canvas uh, will affect your perception when you're trying to judge value. Value is how light or how dark something is. So if I look at this color here and I think, oh, okay, how dark is that? For, so when I mix up my color, um, having this much white around it, it's going to seem darker by comparison. But, and then, so you mix up a dark color and then you paint it and you're like, hey, wait, what's happening here? My, my painting is darker than it needs to be. Well, it's because your canvas is white and it really plays with your eyes. So what do we do to get rid of that effect? Uh, and there's nothing you can, you can't just outthink your way. I guess you could try, but what's easiest and in academic painting, you, you cover the whole canvas with a mid-tone. A mid-tone is another way to say a, uh, a tone that is uh, equivalent to a gray. So nothing that looks too much like a white, nothing that looks too much like a black. So a mid, a mid gray, you can use any paint that is equivalent to a middle, middle gray for value. Uh, historically, people use, this is a, here, let me just show you. I'm using a Sienna here. This is an oil paint. Uh, this one happens to be by um, Old Holland. You can use any, um, you don't even have to use Sienna, but any mid tone color. Uh, you, it, since we're doing an organic subject, grapes are organic matter. Um, so plants, people, anything like that. You're probably gonna wanna do uh, a warm undertone. And uh, you know, sometimes, like historically you would use this, you would use a sienna, but uh, you don't need to. You could use umbers, you can use um, Rembrandt, of course, I think I've said this before, Rembrandt used sap green, even with his portraiture. So uh, there's no one color you need to use to uh, create this, this under layer. And um, any color will do, and it doesn't matter what brush shape you have. We're not going to use this brush for the rest of the painting anyway. So I'm just, um, just to cover the whole canvas. And what I'm doing right now, I'm, I'm dipping my uh, brush in linseed oil. When I dip my brush in linseed oil, if you have paint thinner and you want to use that, whether it's turpentine or turpenoids, anything like that, you can use that too. Just don't put it on too thickly. Um, if you have already put it on too thick, it's, it's okay, you can wipe it off with a rag or you can just add some linseed oil like this. Just dip your brush right in the linseed oil and then you can add it like that and smear it out. And uh, let me just talk about that. Why, why do we add thin paint uh, instead of the thick paint? This isn't the idea to cover the white. Well, yes, the idea is to cover the white, but we're just trying to uh, get rid of the white. We don't need it to be thick because, well, remember, we're using oil paint. And if you put thick paint down, it's not going to dry. And if you put more paint on top of thick paint, what happens? It's gonna, it's gonna smudge, it's gonna smear together. Um, you can't, if you put wet paint onto, onto wet paint, uh, they're gonna mix, it just happens. So you go thick, you go thin paint, and then we're gonna, I'm just scrubbing it in. And then what happened, then when we paint on top with our grape shapes, uh, this color is going to just mix with our colors that we use, the reds and the oranges. This color is going to mix with those colors. If you don't want an underpainting to mix, then what you do after you finish painting it, you can just rub it all off with a, uh, with a, with a cloth or a rag. And even if you try to rub it off, you're still gonna leave some stain. So, 
that's uh, completely possible too. Uh, I should just say, by the way, I do intend on this to be more like a class, more like a painting class, kind of a paint with me painting class. So as opposed to just a watch me paint kind of demonstration. So having said that, if we're at a step and I'm ready to move on to the next step, but you're not ready to move on to the next step, please just drop me a comment. And, uh, and then I'll be happy to just uh, put the brush down and chat about anything or what we've just done uh, while, you, while you catch up. Because uh, I don't want you to, if you are trying to paint along. Okay, awesome. Thanks, Tenley. Yeah, if, if, um, if you are trying to paint along, I, I really want you to, uh, to be able to follow what I'm doing. You remember, I'm just... I'm just talking. You're the one that has to watch uh, and and do. I'm just doing the. I'm just doing. So uh, pl please don't be shy about stopping me. Um, uh, and then also here's. And I mean this is just a user interface situation thing. But with the YouTube, uh, as opposed to other chat uh, models, I don't have a running chat log that I can just scroll up. I don't think. Maybe there's access. Um, oh yeah, I do. Okay, awesome. All right, yeah, I can, I found it. I was just about to complain about not being able to see your chat and about missing uh, comments, but uh, that was my error. I just have to hit the uh, the chat. Okay, great. So I don't think I'll, I'll miss any chat comments now that I see that. Okay, just about another minute to go on your under layer. Try to get rid of any streaks if you have streaks. And you get rid of streaks by going all the way to the top and all the way to the bottom. Um, and instead of doing, this is this kind of motion like, like that is really good for scrubbing it into the textures. But uh, when you're trying to get rid of streaks, go all the way to the top, all the way to the bottom, uh, or all the way side to side doesn't need to be perfect. We are going to paint over all of this. Okay, so don't worry about it if you do get streaks. Not a big deal whatsoever. If you have too much paint on your paper or canvas right now, it's a great time to take a rag and just wipe, wipe some off. It's really not going to make a difference. We can also delay that step and wipe some off afterwards. Let's talk about the next step now while, while some of you are finishing up. The next step is basically uh, designed to get your proportions correct. You don't have to worry about tone or color. This is based on an, on an old model of painting that's been around for about five, 600 years. Uh, so first step is toning the canvas. Second step is getting your proportions right. Don't worry about tone, don't worry about value, color, hue, chroma, anything, just proportions. This is not actually a painting step this is a drawing step. So grab yourself a smaller brush. I was using a, uh, just, just now I was using an 18. It didn't matter, but I was using a larger brush, an 18. Now you're gonna grab something, maybe half that size. You could grab a, a 10 or an eight or a six, not a micro brush. Like don't, don't grab a two or a zero, but um, something kind of pencil sized, I would say. You will, if you're new to painting, you'll have a, a familiarity with, with uh, how to use pencils. So, you know, an eight, this is an eight, uh, number eight round brush um, is very much pencil sized by comparison. There you go. So if you're new to painting, this feels very natural because you're used to holding uh, pencils. You've been holding pencils and pens your whole life, presumably. So um, there we go. That's a number eight round brush. If you don't know about different shapes of brushes, I have a whole YouTube video on that where I go through um, what a round brush is and a flat and a bright and a fan and a filbert and an angled brush and also talk about when to use what brush and why. So Please do reference that uh, 
in your, in your own time if, if you're uh, curious. But I'm going to use this nice uh, round brush and um, I'm going to be putting our paints here on the palette. So let's do that. We're going to go, we're going to use the same color that we've been using. This is that raw sienna. You can use any color if you don't have raw sienna. Um, you can use, if you have uh, Van Dyke Brown or Burnt Sienna or Burnt Umber. Um, do, don't use a uh, cold color though. So don't use any greens, don't use any blues, don't use black. And you, if you don't have any brown colors, then I would, um, I would say maybe if you have uh, red, you could use red because we're going to be painting with red anyway. Um, okay, so what what is this step? This step is just uh, getting th uh, some paint on your brush, thicker paint now, thicker than we were using before, and we're just going to draw the grapes. You don't need to draw your grapes as you see them there. You can draw, I don't know, how many grapes do you want to draw? Let's, for sure, everyone's going to do the, this one, uh, which is a, a circle, and this one, which is a circle. So let's say minimum you do two grapes, those two, uh, and then draw as many other ones around the, this one and this one. So if you want to do three, let's you know let's do that one or that one. So let's let's do that. But we'll at minimum we'll do number one and number two, um, and then and we'll see how far we get. So okay, I'll just you can. See, it just, just draw them in. They don't have to be perfect circles right now. This is like a rough sketch. Um, and then this one just doesn't quite touch. It's off to the side. I'm just gonna tape my canvas to my easel for a moment um, because it's kind of rocking back and forth. I don't know if that's as distracting for you guys as it is for me, but hopefully that will stay. Um, okay, there's two, and this one's kind of a half one in the reference image. That's not a big, super big deal. We can make up the rest of it. This one looks like it, it's in front. There's a little one underneath here. And just go back to your drawing. Remember, this is all rough drawing. You're going to paint over every line you see here. So don't worry about trying to get perfect circles or, or uh, you're just worried about proportions right now. This is the time when you make things a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller. Um, but you're gonna, whatever you put down here, these are the proportions that you're gonna stick with. I won't draw, there's, there's this little sliver of one there. I'm not gonna do that one. There's a big one underneath here. And a little one off to the side. Let me see. Um, I mean, I can, I'll, I'll, I'll put them all in. You can see I mean, it doesn't have to be exact. It's uh, not a big deal at all. I'll put them all in and then we'll figure out afterwards. Mm. How many we're going to do. I think the whole bunch will be a little bit too many for, for one sitting, but I don't know, we'll see how, how quickly it goes. There are different kinds of grapes that you can uh, paint. I just pulled this image from the internet uh, for, t for tonight, but you can, um, you'll notice once you start painting grapes a little bit more, you'll see that uh, green ones or uh, some different varieties of red ones, they, 
Some are more opaque, some are more translucent. Uh, yeah, it's, it's amazing. When you're drawing your circles for your grapes, think, think about um, the spaces between them as well. Because it's a bunch, the, uh, the spaces between are going to also be grapes. We're going to have to account for those shapes somehow. And uh, I'm going to give you a few extra minutes. Maybe I'll put this one in front like this. So, you know, you can see that I'm just using it as a guide here. We just want basic shapes. Don't try to copy it exactly. Um, Okay, uh, another two minutes and then we will move on to the next step uh, unless somebody specifically wants to uh, have another minute after that. So just kind of look at all of your grapes and see if there are any that are really out of whack. Now is the time to redraw your circles. If you don't want uh, the shape of something in particular, grab a rag and then you can just rub some of the oil away with a rag. Okay, if you are ready to move on to the next step, then uh, I just uh, was rem just reminded myself with this rag, if you have a paper towel or an old sock or a rag, preferably uh, you've, you've uh, washed your sock, but um, an old rag or something like that, just wrap it around your finger or a paper towel works too. And uh, here's a little technique we didn't, we haven't done in one of the um, other tutorials that I think might be a little bit fun. So everywhere uh, in our reference where we see light areas, you know, here, here, you can see where the, the light source is coming down from, from the top right. Let's just pull off some paint by rubbing it. Rub some of the paint away. You're not trying to get it all off, just making a little bit of a difference. Um, what what this is going to do, this is a this is kind of a little technique that some people do. What it does is it allows the paint, the, once we once we apply paint later on, uh, it allows it to be purer, so less uh, muddied by the brown, by the by the sienna. And uh, that's one way that you can keep your colors much more vibrant. So I'm just hitting the top on the right side where that direction of light is. You'll notice that uh, these grapes, there, there's a lot of uh, light from the on the bottom left as well. That's reflected light and we're going to get into that. We're going to get into that amazing power of reflected light in, uh, for creating translucent effects. Um, that's, uh, something pretty cool. So, yeah, just grab your, oh, that was, uh, there's a bad mistake. I'm using a rag with some wet paint, so um, suboptimal. Anyway, there's an opportunity for me to show how to make a correction. So you know, how typically all I do is um, I'll just take a cleaner part of the rag and then rub it off. If it doesn't come off, we have one more option. Okay, it hasn't quite come off. Our next option is to take a clean part of the rag, dip it in thinner or linseed oil, and uh, just get it wet. And then we can pull it off. That is the magic of oil paint. Nothing is forever until it dries, so. It's, it's going to be painted over anyway. It's not a big deal, but 
those kinds of things happen all the time, especially when you're a bit of a messy painter like I am. All right, let's... Um, I'm just I'm just trying to consider whether or not we should do the background first. I always do the background last, and it's a bit of a problem. Uh, Tanley's ready. Thank you. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Let's. If anyone needs um, another minute, just uh, just let me know. If you're ready, you don't need to write anything. But if you need another minute, let me know. Otherwise, we're going to move on to our color choices. Okay, let's move on to color choices then. We, um, I'll tell you, I'll tell you how we're going to go about this. So, I'll use a brush to point. The idea is this, where you have the light source, you, can you see where the light source is? It's like a square, here, here, here. It's coming in from the top right, and it's hitting each grape at the same point. Top right, like one, between one and two o'clock. Boom, boom, right there, okay? Where that light source is hitting, that is going to be the lightest part of the grape. That's a given. Now, the trick to painting three dimensions is to paint the lightest part will be a color, whatever it is, plus white. And then the other parts that are not the lightest part, you're going to decrease the amount of white. And when you decrease the amount of white, you do two things. Only the first thing you're doing is, of those two things, only the first one is intuitive. The first thing you do is, by decreasing white, is lowering the value or allowing the color to become darker because the color plus white is lighter, so the color minus white is darker. That's intuitive. As you decrease the amount of white, you it, the color becomes darker. Okay, cool. But what's the second thing that happens? This is the thing that's not so intuitive, and this is crucial when you want to paint realism. The second thing that happens is that when you decrease the amount of white, you are allowing what's left, the pure color, to express in its full chroma. So chroma is a third dimension of paint. There's, there's value and hue and chroma. Chroma is a measure of the color's saturation or vibrancy. The part with white here will be lightest but it also has a low chroma because it has so much white in it. The next part after that will have a higher chroma, or another way to say it is that it's more vibrant. That level of vibrancy will be crucial in painting these grapes because you just will have a line of vibrant color, highly saturated vibrant color, here it is. The line is, um, just so it goes light source and then this line of vibrant color and then reflected light underneath the line of vibrant color. That's the plan. So again, let's, let's reference this painting that, that we just finished. So here's a good, a good example here. You can see Here's the light source. It's pretty much coming from the same direction. All of this color here is quite dull. It's red and magenta plus white. It's not vibrant at all. And, and your brain is going to interpret that as in, that's the skin of the grape and it's being hit by light. Then I transition to, to this is the stripe that I'm talking about. This stripe is both darker than this and more vibrant than this. And when you do that, darker and more vibrant, it will give it a translucent effect. And then after that, we go into the reflected light and we change the hue altogether. We don't go 
for the reds and oranges, and actually there's even some magenta up here, we go more into the oranges and yellows. So this is the, this is the kind of the map, this is the plan. And um, so that's the overview. Let's get into it now. If uh, I think we're all pretty much ready to go. So this, uh, we're gonna do this part first. We're gonna go white plus magenta. If you don't have magenta, you can use uh, red, cadmium red, a nice warm red if you have one like cadmium here. Um, but I'm gonna go with magenta. Magenta is right beside red on the color wheel. And uh, you know, these two colors are very similar. They're cousins basically. Um, uh, red plus white makes, makes a kind of a uh, baby pink and magenta plus white makes a hotter pink. But they're very, very similar colors. Um, but the, yeah, the magenta is the one I'm going with um, just because I find magenta plus white equals a color that looks like red, makes the brain think it's red, but under brighter light. Uh, this one happens to be a Michael Harding. You can use any magenta you have. Uh, for those of you who've been painting for a little bit, you'll know that magenta is a transparent color uh, as opposed to that cadmium red, which is opaque. And why does that matter if a color is transparent or opaque? Well, um, it matters if you're glazing because you want to glaze transparent colors. Medium magenta, yeah, that's, that's fine. You can use red magenta. You can mix red and magenta together. I mean, you can do your exercise in, in greens if you want. I just want to, I, I want to try to show you guys the, uh, the idea of these kind of three regions of the grapes where you have this one region where the uh, there's white and it's very light, it's lighter, but the chroma is low. And then the next region is this vibrant region where the chroma is high and there's no, there's no white. And then after that will be the reflected light. So let's go with um, magenta plus white. I'm gonna put it up on the palette here, magenta, white you um, you're gonna find in the course of uh, painting hundreds of paintings that you develop a certain location for your colors which you know where do you want your colors and uh, how easy is it to get to them I don't I don't have that as much there are certain painters that always put the same colors in the same uh, positions. I don't have that as much. So um, I just kind of put whatever, I only put down whatever I'm using. I don't put out a full palette every time. All right, uh, I'm going to use that same brush that we're using for drawing. It's the number eight round brush. And uh, let's get a little bit of each. White has, this is titanium white, by the way. Don't use zinc white. Zinc white is transparent. And titanium white is your go-to it's, it's highly, highly opaque, and it has a very high tinting power, which means that it uh, sort of exerts its dominance over whatever colors it, uh, it's mixing with. So I have uh, magenta and white. Don't worry too much about getting the right tone, the right, uh, how light it's going to be. We're not trying to make an exact copy of this painting. We're just thinking about the regions. So I'm gonna start lighter and then, uh, let me see. Yeah, I'm gonna start light and then get darker if need be. So let's think about the, the direction of light from the top right. You're gonna hit the grape, in, the grapes in pretty much the same spot. You uh, just keep going for more and more grapes until it looks like your color is changing a lot. And then you're gonna wipe your brush off because now you have a bunch of this burnt sienna. So wipe, wipe your brush off on a rag and then go back, get some fresh, clean paint. Try to get it to be the same, uh, 
tone and color that you mixed. And that will take a little bit of practice. But you notice as I move to each, each new uh, grape, it's, uh, I'm, the color is mixing with that sienna. So that's why you have to keep going back. When you paint like this, this is uh, Alla Prima style painting. This is the kind of painting that is um, wet into wet style. And what that means is that you can do a lot of your mixing right here, right on the palette. Uh, it's, a, it's a faster way to paint with oil paint. It doesn't involve any glazing, although some people like to paint Alla Prima and then let it dry completely and then glaze more colors and tones on. And those look really beautiful. Just a really amazing way to paint. Um, you see I'm adding that same color and tone everywhere. Don't go right to white. Make sure that you have, in terms of a one to 10 scale, you're adding a maybe a two right now. You're not, this isn't your lightest color. You always want to reserve your very brightest color for just a, a pop, a highlight pop. Um, let me see. Put one back there. I forgot to draw that in, no problem. Okay. Now, oh, there's one more in the middle. Kind of have that highlighted area now. Okay, at this point, you should have all of your um, areas of the grapes highlighted. One thing you'll notice is that they they highlight all the same way uh, because they're all the same shape. They're all they're all roughly speaking spheres. Now that's not a problem logically but it is a problem creatively. Uh, in order to have, and it, it sounds weird, but in order to have uh, more realism, you have to introduce some chaos. If things are too ordered, too patterned, um, they, they lose some kind of realism. Um, it's almost like, um, let, me, let me think. Uh, if, you, if you've ever heard a uh, vinyl, like a record, record player. The vinyl uh, has this, a warmth to it. Musicians describe a warmth because of the imperfections in the grooves of the vinyl, um, as opposed to the exact copy that, that you get with a digital copy. And that's kind of the same thing with painting. If things are too ordered, too patterned, they take on a on an anti-real um, feeling. So. Having said that, we're at a point right now where we want to introduce some chaos into this lighter area. So this is where you move away from your knowledge of how to um, color a sphere and just kind of randomly add some lighter areas in different parts. And don't use exactly the same color. You might want to go a little bit lighter, a little bit darker in places. I'm using the reference here, but just kind of mix it up. And um, and again, we're just not too chaotic. We just want a little bit of chaos to uh, and introduce that. And uh, so just kind of making these indications on each grape. little spots and marks and there's no there's no uh, reason why I would I put certain ones in certain places don't worry about that at all okay if you're at that point now 
Or maybe I'll give you another minute. Don't worry about blending your, your uh, work in right now. We're gonna get to that. Okay. Now, what I would like you to do is consider the areas directly to the left of this bright area. The area directly to the left, we're gonna go for a magenta line. So you can use, you don't wanna go straight magenta, you see how dark it is. You can use a little bit more of that magenta plus white. And you're basically gonna go with a line that's in this direction, from the bottom right to the top left. Think about the sphere. Okay, so that's the line you want and you're gonna follow the curve of the sphere. I'll do one here just to show you like this. Do another one, same idea. Okay. Um, and again, don't do all of them exactly the same. You want that, in, introduce a, a little bit of that chaos. So have some of them broken lines and um, just, just mix it up. But you, you're, you're painting the area right beside the, the lit area. And just kind of scribbling it in. I'm not minding if I'm picking up some of the burnt sienna. That's totally fine. Keep your shape. Stay inside the lines for the for the grapes, because this was going to start getting confusing. Okay, in the, for the ones that are too round, like this one, just add some kind of squiggles here and there, and, and uh, I'm gonna break it up so it's not so perfect. be a metaphor in there somewhere this idea that things too orderly don't seem real so I'm just kind of uh, very lightly scribbling some of the darker magenta into the lighter areas and some of the lighter areas into those darker magenta and just creating that chaos um, that will give you give you your realism don't don't uh, put your magenta too far down the grape only maybe it's halfway at maximum I'm blurring some of these lines And of course, we always reserve the right to go back into the entire thing at some point. Now I'm going to move to another color. I'm going to transition from magenta to cadmium red. Uh, I'll just talk for another minute and give you uh, just give you another minute to, or maybe two minutes to carry on just uh, adding and refining the, that magenta area. So I'm gonna add some cadmium red for those of you who are getting ready. <clears throat> and uh, as some of you who are painting along and finish up, let me just take this opportunity to, here, so add some cadmium red. Let me just take this opportunity to uh, mention my Patreon. I do now have a Patreon. I've had it for just over a month or so. There's cadmium red, Michael Harding. Um, I've had a Patreon now for just over a month or so, and um, I've been very fortunate to have some of you um, uh, support me uh, that method. But uh, for uh, starting at $2.50 a month, um, I have exclusive content. Um, and then I have other things on there as well, too. Uh, wallpaper for your phones. You're using green? Okay, nice one, Adam. Yeah. 
So just, um, you can use any color you want as long as the value is about right. Um, yeah, so like I have wallpapers, coloring pages, discount, 20% discount, anything in my store. Alternative for the red. Well, we're gonna, we're using an analogous color palette. So we're going magenta, red, orange, yellow. So if you don't have red, orange is next. You could mix magenta and orange together. Uh, you'll get a reddish thing that won't be as vibrant, but uh, yeah, yeah. If you have magenta, do you have magenta and orange? You could use those, but basically we're using an analogous color palette. Another, another way you could do this painting is instead of using magenta, red, orange, yellow, you could do it with purple, blue, green, yellow, and just do cool colors. And uh, remember, this is mixed with white here. All right, let's 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 jump into the red. So um, yeah, just wrapping up on, on that Patreon. If you do, uh, if you if, if you would like to support me, please do um, check out my Patreon page. It's Mark Liam Smith. Um, if you want to collect art, that's another way to support me. Go to my website, uh, check that out. I have prints available of over 40 of my paintings starting at 25 bucks. And um, thank you for those of you who do go and uh, check that out. Okay, next we're gonna do this amazing cadmium red. Uh, we're gonna do a vibrant area um, in the middle, but it's actually a line like this. It's the kind of terminator line where the light hits the spherical object. Oh, thank you, Tenley. I appreciate uh, you checking those out. Um, the, the line comes down, the light comes down, hits the sphere, and then Beyond that line, which we're going to do cadmium red, it's going to be reflected light in very vibrant oranges and yellows. So this, the idea with this red is that it's going to be darker. We want a nice dark area here. And if you have a, um, Adam, you said you don't have a red, you can use any color as long as it's the right value. It can be dark. So let's, I'm looking here. It's this shape here. This is this is going to be the darkest part of the grape. Now this is different because grapes are translucent. If it were opaque, the darkest part would be on the bottom left side. But because translucent objects have reflected light, the darkest part is actually this little line in the middle. It's not only the darkest, it's also the most chromatic, so the most vibrant. And uh, I'm not being shy with how thick I'm putting on this cadmium red. You can put it on nice and thick. Um, it, it will mix very nicely with the uh, orange that's to come and also with the magenta. Uh, cadmium red is the, it's kind of the, the general of the warm army to use a, a, a battle analogy. Um, yeah, it just, it works so well. It mixes well with orange, it mixes well with yellow. You can even go to, uh, on the other side with magentas. It's, uh, it's just, and the cadmium as well. It's just, it's just incredible. Um, it's just so vibrant, rich. Cadmium, of course, is a, is a uh, mineral. It's a, sorry, it's a, it's a chemical. It's on the periodic table of uh, elements cadmium and cobalt, that whole first line of transition metals. You, um, you can make almost any, all of the periodic table, that first line of transition metals. Um, you know, you have, you have titanium, which is titanium white. You have um, chromium, which is uh, makes wonderful uh, chromium oxide, which is a green. Of course, cobalt is used in a lot of cool colors. Um, what else is on that line? Zinc and um, uh, yeah, obviously, uh, we have cadmium lower down. I don't know what cadmium is, maybe in the 40s, 48 or something along those lines. But uh, man, that whole first line of transition metals on the periodic table. Uh, apologies on that digression. Uh, yeah, so let's keep going with this. We're going right beside that magenta and this nice, vibrant line down the middle. 
Again, don't do the same kind of line in all of the grapes. It's the chaos that's going to make it look uh, more authentic. If you do that same kind of line everywhere, um, it's just, it's going to look artificial. It's going to look like a, uh, what is it, the Uncanny Valley, but without humans, with the grape version of the Uncanny Valley. a bunch back there. I'm going to mix the uh, magenta and the red together to fill in two will go very nicely. I'm going to mix those together um, to fill in this spot that's that I don't have any grapes or that I do have grapes but they're way back. I'm just going to fill in those spots with a mixture of magenta and red. Okay, another uh, another minute or so, and then we'll move on to the next color. Uh, yeah, if you have any questions, drop them in the uh, in the chat, and I'm happy to uh, pull up at any point and just address them. It's better to uh, have the questions come up as we get to a certain step or a certain stage because we don't want to, uh, we don't want to get lost. And I certainly, this is a, this is a more of a class, more of a painting class. So feel free to just fire away if you have questions. Uh, by the way, if uh, I, I'm just assuming most of you uh, found me from TikTok, but um, if you uh, if you haven't found me from TikTok, and uh, then please do know that I have a, uh, a TikTok uh, channel as well where I do mostly drawing um, tutorials, but uh, I have painting content on there as well, and also other other uh, kinds of content. You know, so maybe some thoughts about art, or I'll make some announcements for some of my upcoming shows. And uh, yeah, maybe I should also say a little bit about me. For those of you who don't know, my name is Mark Liam Smith. I'm a professional painter. I'm represented by three galleries. And in the last seven years, I've, uh, I've shown my work in over 30 art fairs internationally, including uh, art fairs in Miami and Basel in Switzerland um, and uh, New York. I've shown in Los Angeles and Toronto and Montreal. And uh, I paint primarily still life in uh, hyper chromatic, very like uh, very bright colors. And uh, yeah, that's that's kind of a little bit about me. I also do some digital work, um, uh, like uh, photography that's manipulated digitally. And I just had a show in New York uh, at the uh, end of March with some of that digital work. Everything is on my website and you're welcome to check it out. Um, but uh, yeah, I have prints available all my paintings and I also have originals available only through the galleries though. I don't sell originals uh, through my uh, through my website. I only sell my original paintings through the, the galleries that represent me. Um, two in Canada and one in Australia. So that's a little bit more about me. Let's move on now to the next color. We're gonna go from cadmium uh, red. We're gonna go down to you have a choice. You can, if you have cadmium orange only, you can use that. But if you have this color, cadmium red light, it sits right between cadmium red and cadmium orange. If you don't have it, no problem. You don't even need it. You just go straight to cadmium orange and then mix a little bit of cadmium red with it. But you're basically looking for a transition from cadmium red to to cadmium orange. So let's uh, let's add a little bit of orange here. I 
Sorry, I'm just going to make a correction. I think I said over 30 art fairs. I should have said over 30 group shows. Um, and I think about a dozen art fairs. So I've shown it at Scope in, uh, in Basel, yeah, at Pulse in Miami, uh, affordable art fair a bunch of times. Yeah, yeah, I think about a dozen art fairs, a little correction there. Um, let me see this one. I forgot to get the top there. Okay, let's get some of that orange going now. So what's the idea with the orange? Well, we're painting these grapes with with an now what's what's called an analogous color palette. And what that means is that the colors that we use are beside each other on the color wheel. Think about the color wheel like this. Okay? On a half of it it's the warm colors, on the other half is the cool colors, and the warm the warm side and the cool side are divided by yellow at the top and purple at the bottom. And when you use an analogous palette, you're using colors on one side, in this case, the warm side. If you want to use the cool colors, which will be cool yellow, that's like a chartreuse, cool yellow, green, teal, aqua, turquoise, blue, and, vi and, and, and uh, indigo. On the warm side, you have violet, rose, like quinacridone rose, magenta, uh, red, orange, and then warm yellows like uh, cadmium yellow. So an analogous color palette uses only the one side or only the other side. We're using the warm colors here. And this is a simpler way to paint. When you get uh, more complicated with your palette, then you'll do, you'll do things like adding, uh, let's say you're doing a warm palette, you can add some of the cool colors, the complementary colors, let's say, um, let's say you have magenta. The complementary color to magenta is over here. It's a color called phthalo emerald, which is a kind of a green. And uh, that's the complement. If you mix the two together, you'll get a perfect black. And um, so you can mix a little bit of the phthalo emerald with a lot of magenta, and that will decrease the chroma. It'll pull the, pull the uh, rich magenta It'll kind of gray it out. It'll pull it toward the middle. And uh, that's a more complicated skill that we're going to get into in further lessons. Remember, this is just the fourth lesson, so um, we have to take things slowly. We're going to stick to just these analogous color palettes. Why orange? Because orange is beside red on the color wheel, and we're doing an analogous color palette. It's lighter in value, and we need to have something lighter than that middle line so that it looks like reflected light. We want to have something that looks like reflected light. So let's go for it. Cadmium orange on the underside, not all the way to the end of the grape. That's going to be, that's going to be yellows, but um, just a little bit past the halfway. It's okay if it blends with the cadmium red, you actually want it to. Remember that kind of chaotic. Don't don't be too um, formal with the the lines. You want to, you want to mix it up. Just generally speaking, you want it on the left side like this, but kind of make it a little more chaotic. If you get too much red on your brush, wipe it off on a rag. Good, uh, good brush control and you know, knowing how much you have uh, contaminated your paint. That's an important thing. So, you know, it was pure cadmium orange, but now as I'm mixing it, it's getting contaminated by the magenta and the red and so on. So when I move on to another grape, I have to be aware that I'm using a contaminated brush uh, and that's fine sometimes. That's exactly what you want. You want to bring in colors to different parts. 
and sometimes it's not so fine. You want to keep your colors very vibrant and rich. So it's all, it's all part of uh, that kind of meta plan. What, what do you want to have happen? So I'm, I'm using that orange now on the bottom side. And it's going to hopefully read like it's reflected light. Don't be too ordered with it. Allow it to mix with the red and the magenta. Um, you can allow all of these colors to mix with each other uh, for that simple reason that they are all analogous. They're not going to get muddy. Um, people are, I don't know why, but people are always worried about oil paint. It's, um, it's going to make muddy colors. And it's like, no, it doesn't make muddy colors if all of your colors are on the same side of the color wheel. You know, if they're all warm or all cool, you're, you're fine. It's you can have muddy colors if you mix orange with green or blue with red, you know, anything that's on uh, from from different sides of the color wheel. Um, let's go with some orange back here. I'm going to go with a little bit of uh, white in my orange here on some of these just to uh, Mix it up a little bit. I want to have a couple of different kinds of orange. Now that's going to decrease the vibrancy by adding white, but that's okay. It's uh, especially in the parts that look like they have a lot of reflected light. Just keep, don't get focused on one grape and then, you know, you try to finish just that one grape. Don't do that. What you want to do is just uh, go, go to one, work on it for two or three or four seconds, and then move, move to a different area. That's going to keep your mind active and it's, and it's going to keep you, your eyes searching, looking for areas and you're what you're doing is you're building your your painting intuition and uh and that once you once you have you're able to construct that build that painting intuition then um it just everything becomes more natural so but if you get if you do one grape and you kind of get lost in that grape then you know that can be great for building your focus and your patience and your determination but it's not great for building your painting intuition when you're, where your eye quickly scans the painting and, and tries to determine what, uh, where problems are, what it, should, what it should work with next. So what I'm doing now is I'm going with some white and the orange and I'm, and I'm lighting some of the back, uh, you know, the light's going this way, but on the back side of the grapes, on the left side, they're going to be uh, lit. So I'm not going to go with the bright, bright orange. I'm going to, I'm going to decrease the chroma by adding some white. I'm not just decreasing the chroma, of course, I'm also increasing the value. Value is how light or how dark something is. And chroma is a measure of its vibrancy. Let's worry about some yellow now, maybe. Now I'll, I'll, I'll give you a few more minutes. I'm just gonna go with some more of this orange plus white, maybe on the under parts of the grapes. 
It seems to be a nice uh, reflected light color, orange plus white. Um, it's kind of making it look like the grape should be red, but it's being reflected or something. It's a, it's a bizarre technique is what happens is you, you're just painting and painting and painting and they, it looks like blobs of paint and then all of a sudden it just, they start to look like grapes. They start to look three-dimensional. It's really an odd feeling when that, that happens. It's like, whoa, wait a second. I, I, was, I was painting that? That, well, that was just colors a second ago. Now it's a thing. Um, that's pretty cool when that happens. Um, yeah, so this is cadmium red here. I'm just going to make that transition down to the orange again. To get a nice vibrant orange here. You can do this exercise with any um, analogous color system. We've only used three colors so far. So let's say you used, um, instead of magenta, you could use it something dark, um, but far down the color wheel, like dioxazine purple, or yeah, something, maybe a dark blue. Let's say you could use ultramarine blue. Ult yeah, that, let, that, would be, that would be a really nice set of uh, colors. So let's say you go ultramarine blue, and then instead of red, you could use uh, cobalt turquoise, or just some kind of turquoise. And then instead of the orange, you could use chromium oxide green. And then instead of cadmium yellow, you could use um, cadmium yellow lemon or chartreuse. That, those four, um, ultramarine blue, cobalt turquoise, chromium oxide green, and cad yellow lemon, that would be an amazing combination. Um, I'm doing that. I just, I'm just I'm getting a little bit carried away, a little bit excited by that co combination. Uh, yeah, I'm definitely gonna try that out, but you can you can mix it up. The reason why you can mix up the, the hues is because it's a it's a meta system. It's a system that's above the the hue, above the color, right? This is a system about how different colors relate to each other. It's a relational system. So that's why we can change the colors and still get uh, a result. So. I think having those meta systems in play, or at least in your in your artistic inventory, is uh, is crucial because then you can do things like grapes, or you can do cherries, or you can do the marbles. Uh, you know, any any number of things that are will be you'll you can use the same principle, uh, and uh, they're transferable skills. So that's wonderful. And uh, this is gonna dark over here. All right, I'm just going to go with that cadmium red and magenta mixed together. I'm going to fill in some of these areas. Um, if you don't know already, there's a nice skill. You stick your pinky out and you put it on the, on the canvas and then you can kind of rotate around. And that's a nice uh, way of painting that you don't have to have your, your arm floating in the air. You can rest your arm a little bit. So the reason why I'm going with a magenta and cadmium red on this is that it's uh, quite a dark value. And uh, dark values recede, they, they fall back, and uh, that's what we want. We want to show the grapes that are far back. Light values come forward, dark values recede, and uh, light chroma, sorry, high chroma, like vibrant things, they will come forward, and low chroma recede. So there are different ways you can kind of manipulate um, depth, depth perception. We talked a lot about that last time with uh, painting the tulip. If you uh, didn't check it out, please do check out my YouTube. Um, it's in the, the live replays section. I painted a tulip last week during paint class and I talked a lot about pulling things forward and pushing them backward. Um, this, today's lesson is just more about how to work an analogous color palette. But, um, okay, what I wanna do now is 
is um, have this mixture because it's so nice and it's really dark. Magenta is transparent and that's not going to do a lot for us. But if you mix it with um, cadmium red, which is opaque, you can, you can really do something. So go a little bit thicker and I'm just going to reinforce that line that is um, that separates the the light from the from the uh, reflected light that kind of dark line in the middle and there's no I'm just uh, I'm not following that I'm there's there's no rhyme or reason other than um, I, I want most of it between the light and the dark area. Um, and then I also don't want multiple grapes to look the same. So if I do something on one grape, I, I don't want to do it on other ones. I want to keep it, keep them all different, keep them mixed up. I'm just kind of filling in some of the my white spaces now. With that same dark cadmium red and magenta. You could use something even darker if you wanted to. You could add a little bit of black, even though you, sh you really shouldn't be adding black because black is a cool color. Um, you could add uh, like a burnt umber. That would be nice if you wanted to get a really dark value. Okay, um, let's move now to the far uh, left side of the grapes where we have the maximum amount of reflected light. And uh, we're gonna use, for that area, uh, yellow. But it's not gonna be really yellowy yellow because of all of the orange and red that we already have on, uh, on in play. But uh, it'll, it'll be just enough to make the grapes appear to be shining. I think it'll be really cool. So let's, let's get, um, you have to be, when you're choosing a yellow, you have to be really careful because yellow is right on the top of the color wheel. You know, everything to one side is cool and everything to and the other side is warm. So you have to be careful with your yellows. This yellow, cadmium yellow, is a warm yellow. Uh, I'll show you an example of a cool yellow. This is a cool yellow. Um, cadmium yellow lemon and a warm yellow what that means when we say warm is that the yellow has a little bit of orange in it it's going toward the warm colors whereas a cool yellow has a little bit of green in it it's going toward green so um, we're using all warm colors here this is an analogous color palette so we're going to go with our warm yellow here we go cadmium yellow This is uh, Michael Harding. Um, I would recommend that uh, eventually, you know, work your way up to it. Don't don't start out with Michael Harding immediately, but work your way up to Michael Harding. Um, this is uh, 16. So I got this in 2016. Look how long it lasts. Like I haven't even used half of it yet. And that's, I've been painting full time for seven years. It just lasts forever. It's so heavy. There's no filler in this. It's just pigment and linseed oil. It's uh, Michael Harding's really amazing. I mean, it's series four, so it's about $50, which is a lot of money to put out all at once, but 2016, 
right? Six years, I've used not half of it. So that's conceivable that that could last me 10 years for $50, it's five bucks a year. You know, that's what, 60 cents a month. No, less, less than 60 cents. What am I talking about? It's 40, 42 cents a month. Um, that's amazing. Okay, same brush. We haven't changed brushes. We're using the same round number eight. I just dip it in uh, linseed oil, wipe it off, and uh, there we go, ready. You can do that. You don't need to change brushes a lot if, you're, if they're all warm colors because warm colors can mix with each other without it get, getting muddy. Look, that's not a muddy painting. Um, it's if you have a, basically you wanna have a cool brush and a warm brush. Let's go with cadmium yellow. We're going to go, you, the reference uh, material is not helping us here, but basically when the light hits a sphere, there's a line here that should be all, everything below the line is dark. But here, everything below this line should be dark. But in translucent objects, some of the light that goes through the object bounces off the back of the object and that's what we're seeing so we want to we want to indicate that with this cadmium yellow and it's going to be not quite at the edge almost at the edge and it's going to be uh, in this like c shape It's okay if you mix your paints together because they're all warm colors. Um, but uh, you just wipe it off before you reload. And then what, what that's gonna make when you have that cadmium yellow and you add it right at the bottom there on the left side, it's going to make it look like the light has gone through the grape and is shining through the grape. Um, and that's, that's how we get that incredible translucency. Um, and so what that is, it's actually a trick of the brain. Your brain would rather interpret what you're seeing as the, an object that's just one color yet the light is doing things to it. Your brain would rather have that rather than say it's uh, an object that's made of a bunch of different colors. So it, you, uh, you, know, you look at something and your brain says, oh, I know what's going on here. That's, that's a translucent object. It's like, well, it's not though. It's just a two dimensional piece of paper. So it's pretty cool that you can, if you know how the brain works, then you can manipulate it with your color choices. And uh, I'm just gonna bounce back and forth. I'm gonna add some of this orange in with the yellow and kind of create a transition color. This looks like a yellowy orange. And then I'll save that yellow just for the, almost like a highlight. So this is that yellowy orange. Again, just a C shape at the bottom left. And this is going to be the opposite of the direction of light. The direction of light's from the top right. I have a lot of tutorials about how to paint grapes and uh, water droplets and irises on my YouTube and TikTok. So this is basically what we're working with here. The same idea all of these are translucent Okay 
Okay, there's an area up here that I'm just gonna go back to my magenta. Uh, now we have moved into the uh, finishing things up stage. This is the point where we take a look at each grape individually and make some final adjustments. Maybe there's a transition between colors that isn't quite quite hitting you right. Um, so you can fix those transitions. And also what I like to do, uh, if you've seen me paint on, uh, on TikTok at all, in my live streams, I'm always talking about pulling some of the dark areas um, into the light areas and some of the light into the dark areas. So how I do that is like this, this, let's look at this grape, for example. There's a big dark area in the middle. I wanna take some of the dark area and just create some dots and specks and flecks. And then after I do that, I know with a few strokes, I can take some of the light into the darker areas and dark into the lighter areas. And uh, this tends to unify the whole piece because you have especially some colors, some light in the dark areas and dark in the light areas. But you're also unifying all of these colors that we've used all from magenta all the way to yellow. Just pulling a little bit of each into the other one's area. And kind of mixing it up. By the way, if this is going a little bit too fast for you, and I understand that it probably is, since some of you are beginners, um, don't worry, I do post the video immediately after the live stream. I will post it to YouTube, and then you can watch uh, in your own time, and uh, and just pause it after each step, and uh, you know, and just kind of painting at your own pace. But uh, having said that, I really do appreciate you being here, and uh, if you liked painting with me, uh, please do join me in following Sundays. This is uh, my, uh, my pleasure to help you bring art a little bit closer to your life. I'm going to paint that one underneath. I'm just going to go with something darker. Another one down there. Yeah, and uh, I should have mentioned one more time before signing off that for those of you who uh, would like to support me on Patreon, please do uh, look at my Patreon page, markliamsmith.com. Uh, sorry, uh, markliamsmith at uh, Patreon. And um, for uh, as little as two fifty a month, um, you receive uh, exclusive content and all kinds of little bonuses and so on. Your name on my YouTube videos at the next one, $5 tier, um, and digital discounts and wallpaper and coloring pages and 20% off uh, everything in my store and just, you know, lots of stuff. Um, but also you're supporting me and, and my practice and helping me bring uh, this free content to uh, TikTok and YouTube. So really do appreciate uh, all of your support and uh, yeah thank you for considering that uh, I'm just gonna go a little bit darker on this one back here because it is behind and darker recedes lighter comes forward so I'm just darken it up slightly um, this is coming to a close. There's one down here. Now for the final step, and it's a step that I always wait until the very end, we're gonna go with pure white and uh, shovel it with your brush. You're gonna get a big chunk. No, thank you, Adam. I really appreciate you being here. See how thick that is, a big chunk of white. And in the one small spot where the light hits, you're going to put 
that white and it's gonna it's gonna be this is why our magenta isn't all the way to white so that we can do this with a white highlight and it's gonna just make it pop make sure you're getting the same area in all of the grapes Uh, sorry, I just saw a large comment come in. Let me just hit the button and see what I um, remember. Let me see. Live chat. Um, Joy is asking, Hi Mark, last week when you explained the concept of light colors draw your attention first, or they, they, they come forward. Um, whoops. Uh, draw attention first. A little confused because in drawing landscapes, the lighter shades recede. Um, they shouldn't recede. So uh, I don't know. When I'm talking about um, lighter, lighter colors coming forward and darker colors push back, um, that's universal. That's that uh, doesn't. That's not content specific. So that's a rule that should apply to landscapes, portraits, uh, grapes, you name it. Um, so I, I don't know about, uh, I'd have to look into it. Um, if there's something in particular about landscapes, like maybe the natural landscape, that's a, a weird thing that happens in nature. And so when we see it happening with a landscape, it just, we, our brain interprets it like that. I don't know, um, is, is the short answer, but that's certainly something that I'd be happy to look into for you, um, just in terms of the the optical qualities of light and dark. Uh, it certainly is the case that uh, decreasing value causes um, the object to recede, and also decreasing chroma. Uh, and there are other things too, like uh, edge, soft edge recedes, and uh, hard edge uh, comes forward. I'm just doing some little dots, darker dots in the lighter areas, because these are grapes, they're not marbles. So we, we do want to have little dots and spots everywhere. And, uh, and you don't have to do this next step, but if you want to, you can. You can take um, just the white and a large brush and then um, paint, paint in the background with the with the white um, you don't need to if you don't want to but uh, it does it does make things look a little bit cleaner you can it's up to you how how polished you want this to look um, how much of a study it's um, having it having a background like this a white background is almost like Framing your painting, uh, you know, it's uh, putting on a nice outfit, something like that. But uh, not necessary. Oh, it was with the pencils? Yeah, I don't know. It could be. I don't. I'm sorry, I don't know enough to speak intelligently on that subject um, about exceptions. I know the rule. Um, and I and I use the rule all the time. The rule definitely applies. I just don't know uh, about exceptions or um, you know I, I do use colored pencils um, like Polychromos and Prismacolor Premier and in my drawings I certainly use that rule. So yeah, I don't know if there's something. There may be something particular about landscapes and about how our eyes have or our perception has evolved to uh, interpret landscapes in a particular way that, that may not be typical of the way we see other things in, in with our color relationship. Uh, so we didn't paint the stem, but I uh, we can we can uh, 
not do it now because it, we have all these reds and magentas and oranges down. If you paint green on top of that, uh, it's going to go to mud. You have to let the paint dry, the painting dry, and then you can get into painting that stem. See, I'm not being really fussy about getting uh, the lines very clean at this point. You know, I am using just, what is this, a number 18 round brush. I'm just using a large brush and um, it doesn't have to be white, white. I'm still letting some of the um, sienna from underneath show through. It all depends on the level of polish and the level of finish that you're looking for in your painting. Maybe you want to have a really crisp outline. This is uh, it just comes down to personal style, I think, at that point. Um, you say not to go too dark in pencil sketch when doing backgrounds and landscapes, you suggest. Oh, oh, oh okay, yeah, cool. Uh, thanks, Adam, for that. Uh, thank you for that clarification. So, yeah, I, th um, Adam, I th has. I, I hope this is what you're talking about, Adam. But you've just reminded me of that. So, uh, thank you so much. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, when it comes to value. This is what I mean. Okay, that's awesome. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about now, so thank you. Um, so, when you are painting distance, depth, and you're dealing with, with uh, extreme depth, like when you have, not like this, where you know one grape is a centimeter behind another grape, but when you're dealing with backgrounds where you have things that are far off in the distance, those things that are far off in the distance have a value range that's very shallow. That means that the lightest thing in the distance and the darkest thing in that distance are close to each other. They're both mid grays. Whereas things in the foreground have a very wide value range. They go from all the way to white to all the way to dark, like white to black. The closer it is, the more for the for the same value uh, for the same object if it's closer you're going to get a wide value range and if it's off in the distance it's going to be a narrow value range moreover that narrow value range will be in the light gray area and the reason is that the air between the viewer and the object has mass it has color and that is what you're look. You have to look through that light blue. So you're looking through all of that air, all of that atmosphere, and it's and it's and all of the atmosphere. The the more distance you have, the more atmosphere you look through, and the and what that does is it um, narrows the value range of the objects and also increases their them to a light gray. So that's what that's what was happening there. So that is a um, particular phenomenon to landscapes, and it, and and in particular to distance. So you're looking at very very far distances for those landscapes. Thank you so much for that uh, for that, Adam. That uh, yeah, I wasn't quite sure what it was, what was uh, going on there. Let me. Um, I'm not going to pull out some greens, but um, I think I will just indicate the stem with the burnt sienna that we have here, just just for the sake of completion. Uh, and then I'm going to paint in this stem afterwards, like uh, after the after the paint's all dried, just just for uh, for the sake of having something there, so it's not just floating. Uh, all right, that uh, I make it that just over an hour and a half. 
I hope you enjoyed this painting tutorial and I really do thank you uh, all for being here. It has been my pleasure to uh, paint with you and for you and uh, and uh, once again if you uh, would like to drop by my store markliamsmith.com and pick up a print or check out my Patreon, become a monthly subscriber, that would be amazing. Uh, if not, uh, I have plenty of free content for you here on uh, YouTube and TikTok, um, if that's more your speed. So uh, that's going to be it for now. I will see you uh, next Sunday live here on YouTube for the next painting class. And uh, in the meantime, I'll be doing a demonstration on TikTok, seven uh, 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we're going to be working on grapes. More grapes. This is uh, what we're currently working on, on the TikTok lives, but uh, same idea. I just use different palette. Thank you all very much. It has been my pleasure painting for you. We'll see you in the next one.